Where's my purse? Welcome to the Chaos Lovelies. I'm Em, and I was given a diagnosis of ADHD at 42. And life is making so much more sense while also being a complete chaotic mess. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this craziness. I appreciate it so much. Now, keep in mind, I am in no way an expert. <laughs> I am just barely beginning to understand my own weird brain. So please don't take anything I say on here as advice. I'm just babbling about my own personal experiences. <laughs> so an update from mental health land. I've been seriously struggling, which is why I missed posting last week. It was a really, really rough week. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it too much, but it was definitely a tough one. And I've been trying to get my meds adjusted for four or five months now. And let's just say it got too bad and I tried to call my doctor and my doctor kind of ignored me and never called me back, even though I told them I was having issues with my depression. But luckily, my therapist is a total badass and she went to bat for me. It was kind of incredible. <laughs> they told her they were never planning on calling me back and uh, never would have told me that they would. So that was fun. <laughs> I've definitely been gaslit by the medical profession before. It sucks. But also, I was just kind of like, why would you not call someone back if they said they were struggling and needed help? But whatever, I guess. <laughs> it's not cool at all. But I did finally get to talk to my doctor three days and two phone calls later. And she did finally agree to adjust my meds. <laughs> And I'm just wondering, like, if it's ever going to be easy. I just would like to take care of myself, but maybe once in a while get a little help. But anyway, <laughs> moving on, I am going to be talking a bit about eating disorders and body dysmorphia. So listen with caution. But honestly, this is kind of a celebration. <laughs> so let me set this up for you all. I was the chubby kid in a rather large athletic extended family. and. I developed too early and way too much. Fun stuff. I've had terrible eating disorders from basically from the time I was a tween until not that long ago. <laughs> a couple years ago, maybe. It's been bad. Sometimes it's been okay. And then sometimes it's been really, really bad. <laughs> Since starting therapy, I have made some huge strides in my mental health around the subjects of food and diet and all of the crap that gets wrapped up in those two seemingly simple things. <laughs> they are far from simple. <laughs> so far from simple, especially for me. <laughs> I was taught from the start to just hate my body, hate the way I ate, hate the way I moved, hate the way I looked. It was never right. I was never doing enough. That was my constant state of mind. My hatred for my body was always at the forefront of my mind, and it affected my day-to-day -day existence, as you can imagine. <laughs> and every day, no matter if it was a time of feast or famine, <laughs> I would start my day with weighing myself, and then I would record every single morsel of food that I consumed, overestimating the calorie count, of course, and I would also record every calorie that I burned, and I would underestimate them, of course. I did this even when I was overeating because I used it as a punishment to have to face daily how much I was failing during that time. <laughs> it's not helpful. It's not a helpful thing, let me tell you. So anyway, I have recorded everything that I have eaten since I was 11 years old. If you think that I am exaggerating, you are wrong. I have <laughs> stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of journals to prove otherwise. I told my doctor that recently, and she didn't really seem to believe me either, but trust me, I have. 
I've been dieting since I was eight, but I only started really recording stuff around 11. Before that, I was just kind of eating cucumbers and running around. I don't know. (laughs) So this past year, I finally stopped weighing myself and I stopped tracking everything. I made this conscious decision, knowing that I might, you know, gain weight, knowing that anything could happen, really. But I just made the decision to let go of just the the vice-like grip <laughs> that I had on trying to control my weight, because it doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah, I finally stopped. And honestly, it almost happened unintentionally. I had begun noticing some major progress with therapy. Like I worked and worked and worked and sometimes it felt like I was not seeing any progress at all. And then suddenly, like the beginning of this year, everything just kind of like clicked and it just started to come together. And I began to see like all this progress, which gives you such a like rush and you just want to keep working and see more progress. (laughs) And I also noticed that I was just not hating on myself all the time. I have been working on not having negative self-talk, which (laughs) basically means rewriting all of my self-talk because none of it's ever been positive, not even close. (laughs) And yeah, lately I just realized that I wasn't hating on myself and I realized that I really don't hate my body anymore. And that was kind of a stunning revelation. I can't remember a time when I have felt secure about my body or just not paid any attention to it, which is basically what's been happening. Like, I just kind of just stopped noticing it. And it's been incredible, (laughs) just incredible. It's so freeing. And so that's where I was when my husband and I went to the ocean to celebrate our anniversary. I absolutely love the ocean. It makes me just so purely happy. And for the last couple of years, I have been considering buying a bikini again. And this January, (laughs) I haven't admitted this to anyone, but this January, I made a secret resolution that I was going to wear a bikini this year. Even when I made that resolution, I did not think that that would happen. I almost never keep my resolutions. And that one, I was like, yeah, right. (laughs) That's not going to happen. Like, it's a nice thought, but mm, maybe some other time, you know? I hadn't worn a bikini since I was 15, and that was the very height of my eating disorders. I hated my body the whole time, and I felt uncomfortable in it the whole time. (laughs) I was uncomfortable in my skin. There was no way I was going to be comfortable in a bikini. It was really cute, too, you know? You look back on pictures, and you're like, oh. Anyway. The improvement in clothing for fat people is just incredible. (laughs) It's so much easier to find something cute in larger sizes. And I kept seeing an ad for this super cute bikini. And it's a straight up two piece. Like it's got a high rise waist, but it doesn't have shorts. It doesn't have a skirt. There's no tank top, just a regular bikini top. And honestly, just something I would never have considered before. I had such a phobia of anyone seeing my upper thighs for some reason. I don't know. It's weird. (laughs) After some serious self-talk about the fact that, honestly, no one cares what a 42-year-old woman is wearing on the beach, (laughs) I ordered the bikini. I still wasn't sure that I would actually wear it, but I was hopeful. It was made for bigger, larger-chested women. It was so cute. It also involves orange and green, which are two of my favorite colors. And yeah, I was just hopeful, you know. So then I upped the ante. When I was packing for our trip in a moment of absolute bravado, (laughs) I packed only one swimsuit. I packed the super cute bikini. And this was just kind of huge because honestly, even at the time, I wasn't feeling 100% great about myself. I was struggling already with the depression. And I'd already been to the doctor, and it had been a rough time. I have a hard time going to the doctor. There's a lot of background there. And this one, not only was I struggling with the whole med thing, 
but it also included a very unhelpful lecture about my weight. Honestly, it had sent me into kind of a tailspin, and I was just barely starting to pull myself out of that when we went on our trip. So it was kind of crazy that I just packed that bikini. Because there was no way that I wasn't going in the ocean. I have to go in the ocean. So if I hadn't been able to wear the bikini, I would have had to go in like shorts, I guess. I don't know. But I did wear it. (laughs) And honestly, it was great. I didn't really think about it. Initially, a little bit, I was uh, a touch self-conscious. But honestly, there's just so many other people that are kind of built like me or, you know, they're built in their own way. But Nobody's got like the perfect bikini body, you know, and I just kind of stopped thinking about it. It also helped that everything stayed in place. The top even handled some like massive waves. And honestly, I have never had a bathing suit that could do that. I have a hard time being at the beach. (laughs) It was it was just excellent. And so I didn't have to worry about any of that. And I just got to have fun and enjoy the actual experience. And Oh, it was just incredible. And I kind of realized, like, how much I've been missing out on by being so judgmental of myself when honestly, like, nobody's paying attention. Everybody's worried about themselves, you know? And even if they are, who cares? I'm never going to see those people again. (laughs) I, I can't really express, like, what a major win this was for me. And it's seriously the best and most comfortable bathing suit I've had, like, ever. So, That's extra good. I love it so much. (laughs) Yeah, I would highly recommend therapy. I could never have even known that this version of me was possible without it. And um, it's kind of just become my new way of life now. And it's incredible. It's incredible to finally get to uh, build your own life. (laughs) And like I said, it seemed to take a really long time. And then it also seemed to happen like overnight. So. If you are in therapy, don't get discouraged if you are not seeing progress because you're making progress. (laughs) Oh, so in therapy recently, I was feeling kind of low and I did admit to her that I had not been doing all the self-care things that I need to be doing, you know, every day, which I know is a dangerous and slippery slope. (laughs) She reminded me to just pick one or two things that I enjoy the most and This is something I'm only beginning to have an idea of, which probably seems kind of insane. I've never really known what I actually enjoy. And my therapist had me make a list a while ago, and it was a confronting experience. One of the uh, (laughs) fun, not really, things about complex PTSD and growing up with a narcissistic parent is that everything I ever expressed interest in was ridiculed. It was always easier to just do what other people wanted to keep the focus off of me. And I spent a very long time living that way. And that's not, uh, it's not the best. And it has gotten me in some less than ideal situations in the past. Things have changed a lot in the last few years. Again, thanks to therapy. (laughs) And also, of course, my own hard work because... It has been hard, and I have been putting in a lot of work. (laughs) It's definitely been a massive project. (laughs) And yeah, recently I've been realizing that I'm not really sure what I actually like. (laughs) If something does present itself, then I also have to battle this, like, critical voice in my head that's just repeating how stupid that thing is or whatever. And I'm beginning to realize that that's not my voice and that that voice does not belong there. And I don't have to listen to it. (laughs) It's still hard, though. Slowly but surely, I am beginning to discover what this version of me enjoys and what I want out of life. And it's been a major reassessment, but it's been for the absolute best. I love the path that my life is on right now. So in the last episode, I mentioned that I shaved my head over the winter and how much I am digging having no hair this summer. And it is so good. It's so nice. (laughs) So I had heard somewhere this line about hair holds trauma. I can't remember where I heard it or who said it, unfortunately. And when I first heard it, it didn't entirely make sense to me. 
Like I kind of got it, but I wasn't I wasn't getting the whole picture, you know. But when I shaved my head, suddenly I got it. <laughs> I got it. I was super nervous about shaving my head, and I did kind of ease into it. I just kept going shorter and shorter and shorter. This started in quarantine, and it was a long process. I started with like a wolf cut, which was fun. Um, and I just kept cutting it shorter and shorter and shorter. Finally, when it was only long on the top, I just went for it, shaved the rest of it off. And, you know, I had been told my whole life that I would look weird if I shaved my head because my head was going to be like lumpy or misshapen or whatever. When I could see that it was actually going to look fine, I just went for it. And you know what? It looks fine. I have a pretty round head. It's not that bumpy. And, uh, yeah, I like my hair shaved. I think it was just a way to keep me from doing it when I was in high school because I've always wanted to shave my head. <laughs> but after I initially shaved it, even though I loved it, I hid it under a hat for the last two months of winter because I was just nervous about other people's perceptions, which is stupid. But, you know, you got to let go of those things slowly. <laughs> oh, So why am I telling you all of this? Well, it's because of that quote, hair holds trauma. It stuck with me, and I always found the idea interesting, but like I said, when I shaved my head, I fully got it. My hair has always been incredibly heavy. By the time I fully shaved it off, there wasn't that much left to lose, and so I'd already had the major relief from that just constant pull, you know? But a different weight lifted off my shoulders when I looked in the mirror and saw my cute little shaved head, and it was just unbelievable. <laughs> and that's when that quote made sense, when everything kind of clicked. I have a ton of hair-related trauma, some physical and a lot of it emotional. And that's on top of, you know, looking too weird to shave my head. <laughs> and all I had to do was shave my head, and it took all of that away. There's no place for it anymore, which is just wild to me, just so wild. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I am probably never going to grow my hair out again. I think I would have to be really, really bored. <laughs> a haircut can just be so healing. It's incredible. I keep finding it so surprising, the places where I find healing. It's never where I expect it to be, you know? So to bring everything back to ADHD, and I do worry that I'm going to stray too often, more into the path of complex PTSD and healing. But let's be honest, ADHD is kind of at the base of everything, isn't it? I mean, it's my brain. <laughs> it's what I'm starting from, which is fun. <laughs> but knowing that is extremely helpful, and growing up not knowing that was so extremely traumatic. I hope I can help somebody to understand themselves better. Maybe earlier than I did, you know? Save yourself some pain if you can. <laughs> oh, yeah. So being ADHD is not the cause of my trauma. I don't see it as some kind of, like, curse that ruined my life or something. My birth mother was a narcissist, and she was so incredibly wounded herself that I can understand why she did the things that she did. Not that it makes it okay or any less horrible to grow up with, but... I know it was out of pain. <laughs> but her own demons and my ADHD kind of met and decided to destroy me. Or at least try. <laughs> I made it, but it was questionable for a while. <laughs> my neurospicy brain made me weird, and that gave her and everyone else plenty of fuel for making fun of me. And I became the weirdo and the cause of everyone's problems. I would have been a target either way in the situation I was in. ADHD just made it easier for them because I was just confused all the time. I was trying to do the right thing, but everything I did was wrong, you know? And that's not just the ADHD either. <laughs> I was recently talking with my husband about another realization, moment of healing, whatever you want to call it. And we got onto the topic of ADHD, because, you know, it's always waiting in the wings lately, <laughs> and apparently always has been. And I was trying to explain, like, the anger and the sadness that comes with getting a diagnosis. I could have struggled, like, a lot less <laughs> if 
in school, in life. And I also see that all of the things that I did that I was belittled and humiliated for were all rooted in a neurological thing that I could do nothing about. And that's upsetting. (laughs) Uh, And it's just another example of how unimportant I have always been. And now on top of dealing with an ADHD life, I also have to heal from hating myself for those same things. (laughs) It can be kind of crushing. (laughs) Oh, but that is the past, and getting into a loop about it is how I have wasted the last few years of my life. And even more than that, honestly. (laughs) And it's just not benefiting me. I don't know that it ever has. So I promised my therapist that I would make an effort to do the self-care things that I have been avoiding, and I am doing my best. I've been much better about showering, brushing my teeth. Sometimes those little things are just so fucking difficult, you know? I saw two things recently that kind of helped me with this. One was about the fact that self-care is not always something that you want to do and that you find enjoyable, but it's more doing the things that are going to keep you going and keep you even in life. And this was huge for me. I was thinking about it when I was struggling to take a shower, and it helped me get in there. And if for some reason you have never struggled to take a shower, it is a very special kind of hell. (laughs) And it's a very real thing. And if you haven't had to fight through it, consider yourself lucky. You will never understand, and that's very good for you. (laughs) But if you get it, you get it, you know? The other thing I saw was a TikTok about someone celebrating their rot, as they called it, and saying that they would never not rot if they needed to. And it was the idea of taking a long time off and kind of sinking into all the shit and doing the hard work, and then to bloom again later as something better. And she really emphasized the need to keep doing it on occasion smaller time periods, like a day or so, just to keep things from building up too much again. And this is exactly what I've been doing. It was such a perfect way to describe what my existence has been lately. (laughs) I recently referred to myself as a boring, lazy lump, and I truly feel I have become that. And if you had any idea how hyperactive and busy, busy, busy on the go I always was before when I was masking, you'd be amazed at how far I have sunk. (laughs) Yeah, so I do really hate feeling this lazy and boring, but I haven't until very recently, if I'm being totally honest. It felt so good to finally rest and to learn how to put my guard down a little and just not have expectations, or at least not as many, you know? Yeah, it felt good. I needed it. (laughs) So I will say I've tried to bloom prematurely a couple of times um, just because of guilt. You know, when you sit around long enough, you start to feel like, oh, I really should be doing something. And even if you don't feel 100 percent ready, you might push yourself. And I tried that, but it didn't work. And I always ended up getting buried again. Uh, But this time I do feel like I'm slowly sprouting and like I'm almost breaking through to the sunlight. And again, it kind of happened without me really noticing it at first. It's so nice, and it feels natural. It feels right this time. And I'm so glad to have all you lovelies with me on this journey. (laughs) Have you ever allowed yourself to just rot, just let go, do the hard work, let everything fall apart for a little while? (laughs) It's hard. It's harder than you might think. Have you ever had a transformative haircut? I would love to hear about those, (laughs) because it is magical. I'd love to hear all of your ADHD stories. You can find me on Instagram, threads, and TikTok. Let's chat. I would love to share our neurodivergent highs and lows. And here's a quick one that I'm sure at least some of you can relate to, and I posted about it on Instagram recently. I play this fun game just about every day, where after one or two times up the stairs to get something, I come back downstairs, I pause, I yell my favorite curse word, and then I head back upstairs again to get something else that I forgot. And then sometimes I repeat this fun little game three or four more times. 
The record, I think, is seven, as far as I know. (laughs) I honestly think I'd give up after any more than that. Like, I just don't have the patience. Like, I don't need it that bad, you know? (laughs) Anybody else play this game? You know the stare game? (laughs) Anyway, I hope you all have a beautiful week and celebrate the successes in your life, no matter how big or small. I hope you take some time for yourself, and if you need to, let yourself rot for a little bit and then bloom when it feels right. And finally, I hope you find your purse. If Rap Media Production.